if I learn one thing from this whole movie, it is great to be the richest person in the world until it's not. Check that. It's showtime. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Nita, your favorite diva, and I'm back for another movie review. The movie that I'm reviewing for you today is The Protégé. Yes. The Protégé is directed by Martin Campbell. From the 007 franchise, he did Casino Royale, which is personally one of my favorites. Um, and GoldenEye. And that's like back some years ago, like years, years, like maybe in the 80s. <laughs> so, eh. so I guess he's a little bit of a mixed bag. I also liked um, his movie, The Mask of Zorro and The Foreigner that came out with Jackie Chan a couple of years ago, which I both liked. Fun fact, you guys, this man is almost 80 years old, and this movie was quite impressive for a man of that particular age. And that is all I'm going to say. Bravo, honey, bravo. The movie is starring Maggie Q. You may know her from Nikita on um, The CW, and Sam Jackson, of course you know him, Michael Keaton, fan favorite, among many, many others. The movie clocks in at one hour and 49 minutes, of which the time flew by. No pacing issues whatsoever. It is a hard R action crime thriller is the category. And baby, they knew what the, they knew what the assignment was. The synopsis reads, Rescued as a child by the legendary assassin Moody, played by Sam Jackson, and trained in the family business, Anna, played by Maggie Q, is the world's most skilled contract killer. But when Moody, the man who was like a father to her and told her everything she needs to know about trust and survival, is brutally killed, Anna vows revenge. She becomes entangled with the enigmatic killer, played by Michael Keaton whose attraction to her goes way beyond cat and mouse. Their confrontation turns deadly and the loose ends of a life spent killing will weave themselves even tighter. Now that was a, that was a lengthy description, but that is all I'm going to say because this is a spoiler free review. I'm assuming that all that stuff was in the trailer. So I hope so. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. If you're returning, you already know what it is. I watch movies so you don't have to. I tell you a little bit about the good, the bad, and a little bit of everything in between and recommend whether or not you should know or go. See it in the theaters, which is currently planning, started this weekend, or stream it whenever it becomes available for streaming. No judgment. So let's start off with the good. Maggie Q is absolutely an action star. Now, I don't know why Hollywood is sleeping on her. She proved herself in the Kia. She did an amazing job as playing the femme fatale in this film. She definitely brought the sexy and the lethal in this film. She was given... Oren Ishii from Kill Bill. She was giving me those kind of tease. She was giving me those vibes. And uh, she was, and Oren Ishii was my favorite character in the Kill Bill franchise. So badass. I just loved it. Sam Jackson was excellent playing the legendary assassin. Sam is continuing to kill it in each role that he's in, I definitely have a great respect for him, for his filmography and what he brings to each of his projects. Um, I'm sure he has, has to have made history by now as the actor in the most number of movies. <laughs> Michael Keaton's character was great. I love Michael Keaton. I've loved him from uh, Mr. Mom from Batman, like, oh my God, I loved him. But later on in his career, you remember he used to be the good guy, but 
there was some turn and a shift in his career. It's like now every time I see him, I just think bad guy. Like is this some kind of some kind of demeanor that he gives off something about it says it in his face as he's aged over the years. I just see bad guys. So as soon as I saw him, I was like this. Oh. <laughs> I was like this girl run. <laughs> They had so much chemistry um, between him and um, Maggie Q's character. It was just oozing off the screen. I was just like, yes. It played out really, really well. I really liked the way they handled that cat and mouse thing that was going on. The action was top notch. None of that shaky cam. None of that. It, no. They came to play. You hear me? They came to play with the big dogs. You saw everything that was going on. There was no confusion. There was no uh -uh, uh, fight choreo. 1,000. Hand-to-hand combat, 1,000. Gunplay, 1,000. The set pieces was top-notch. There are so many favorite scenes that I saw. The jail scene was really, really great. Um, there's a torture scene that was really good. The opening scene fantastic like that movie was so fast paced and i mean it had its um ebbs and flows where it developed the character you saw some things or whatever i just think they did a really good job with keeping the pace really really good it was just really good um i like the nuance in the film um where everybody was essentially bad were were bad guys but it was clear who you were rooting for um, I think there's a delicate balance, and I think they did it really, really good. Um, there was actually a line of dialogue that kind of addressed it, and it kind of gave you a confirmation that, ooh, my, my heart was in the right place or whatever. So, you know, you know who you're rooting for. So I love how they addressed that. Um, yes, love the movie. Where the movie faltered for me... Um, not much at all for me. I mean, for me, it was good. Um, I, I think if I had to pick something, I would just say um, the stakes were kind of up and down. Uh, one minute they felt invincible, untouchable, and then others not so much. So, you know, I kind of was, you know, kind of thrown off or whatever with some of the different um, um consequences that was happening and stuff uh the villains were shrouded in mystery now i can see people saying that they didn't give enough but i felt like they gave enough i felt like um i can't remember it was this other movie where they totally had these bad the antagonists shrouded in so much mystery and they never addressed it it wasn't like that in this movie um I think they gave you enough to satisfy the audience. So, so before I give you my overall thoughts on the protege, why don't you take a minute and follow me on my social media? It's right there. So my overall thoughts on the protege is that it was a kick-ass ride of a time. Um, the movie held pulled no punches. At times, it reminded me of a Bond flick with the romance element in it, but mostly a female-led John Wick film. I absolutely adored the movie. I loved it. I will watch it, put it on as background noise, and probably end up watching it. Um, I give it four out of five stars, and I say go see it in theaters or streaming. No judgment here. So for my deeper recommendations, I have, of course, John Wick. I have Casino Royale from the um, 007 series. That was actually Martin Campbell's movie, one of my favorites of the franchise. And of course, because I um, uh, mentioned my girl, Oren Ishii, Kill Bill Volume 1. Yes. So if you like my video, please make sure you like my video. Please make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment. Let me know if you plan to see it. Um, have you watched Nikita, Nikita on the CW? First and foremost. 
Uh, this was this is one of my top contenders for the year, like so far. Um, in my top ten, it was really really good. I enjoyed it enormously. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you come back. All right, all right. As always, I'm Nita, your favorite diva. Peace out.